Okay, guys, welcome to our March team call. Um, I am recording this, so if you have to pop off or pop back on and make sure um, people get on that aren't here just yet. Um, it is a little bit of a weird day because it's not our normal day and time because next week we are on the cruise. Um, just so you guys know that the Ultimate Portion Fix packs, the $10 off the base kit and the $20 off the challenge pack is only good through March 31st. And that test group starts April 1st. So March 31st is the last day to sign, not only the last day to get the sale, but the last day for coaches to be able to be in the test group, which has already opened. Um, so um, Katie Crum, which she's just had a name disaster, so I was going to tease her and be like, she had a passport mishap. Um, but I'm not even sure of her legal name since she's changed it like 700 times. But um, I'm not even sure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> right? She's going to be talking to us about how she's really used Instagram, especially Instagram stories, to build her business. She had a killer February. I know she's always been a pretty solid success club um, earner. She is a six star, has 68 months in success club, three-time elite, um, and she has three business centers plus her husband. Um, and in 2019, you've had 200 points so far this, this year. Yes. Okay. So that's amazing. Um, I knew that you were over a hundred in February. I didn't realize you were over 200 for the year. So, so your 2020 success club trip was already paid for. Um, I would think so. Right. I'm not yeah. sure. I haven't looked. <laughs> She's going to share a lot with us about stories. Um, it's definitely a struggle for me. I, I, yours goes always up first in my feed. So I do watch it. I like your energized shots in the morning and <laughs> using so um you can take it away and i will mute myself all right hey guys thanks for having me first of all whitney and jillian um i thought i'd just give just a, a very quick background of me for those of you that don't know me um i started coaching in um 2000 july 2013 I was a challenger first. I had 60 pounds to lose. I lost 20 as a challenger and then signed up as a coach. So I still had about 40 pounds to lose um, after I signed up. And I kind of came from a place of, I was like an epic failure multiple times in my life before that. So when I decided to actually dive in, because when I originally was presented the opportunity, I was like, I just want the the discount basically like a lot of people and only it only took me a couple of weeks and a little bit of confidence of people asking me what I was doing that I was like, you know, why, why not me? I guess I could do this. And I kind of just dove in after that. And my mindset has always been, I will never ever fail at something again. I was kicked out of college. Um, I failed my cosmetology um, career. I just had no passion for it. I was so miserable. So when I started coaching, I was still working in the salon. And I just went all in because I thought, again, I just, I can't fail anything ever again in my life. So this is going to be it for me, even though I had no idea what I was doing. I knew nothing about nutrition. I knew nothing about workouts. Um, I was just on my own weight loss journey. So um, fast forward, 2014, I was able to leave my salon job, go full-time with coaching. So I've been full-time with coaching ever since then. Um, I got pregnant right after the success club trip in Punta Cana in 2017. Uh, we had just bought this house and we knew we wanted to have kids, but it was truthfully very unexpected. Um, so that was a huge life uh, change for us. And I joke that like my house still isn't decorated because we moved in, got pregnant and like, it's just been a mess since then. <laughs> um, but I had to navigate, like figure out how I was going to work my business because I had like known a way for so long. Um, and then in my mind, like I just was going to have this glorious pregnancy where I was going to be like these other coaches and I was going to have like this little basketball belly and I was going to work out hard every day and I was going to eat perfect. And my pregnancy was not that. I will tell you that right now. It was not that at all. Um, I did work out <clears throat> probably about six, still six, seven days a week because I knew that that helped my mental health. I moved around. I did a lot of like silly workouts, like, um, like the dancey ones, country heat and things like that. And I, oh, I, I kept moving, but I didn't follow any nutrition plans and my eating was complete crap during my pregnancy. Um, 
I mean, it worked out then because then I got to have a great transformation postpartum, but that's not really how I planned things. So when the end of 2017 was coming, I was really pregnant. I was was doing March and that's when we were launching 80 day obsession. And it was the first program with Beachbody where they said pregnant people can't do it. And I was like, wow, cool timing. This is a program I'm not even allowed to do. And like, what am I supposed to do here? How, what am I supposed to do with this? And that's when I had to like flip a switch and have a mindset change of, I am going to be the best possible product launcher ever. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if I can do the program or, or not, I'm going to rock this launch. And I just kind of like put my head down and was like, I don't care how I'm feeling. I can't do the program. I'm going to rock this launch um, because our business has changed. I don't know how long you guys have been coaches, but our business is always changing and things are different. You know, I just had a coach sign up the other day that used to coach with me back in 2014. And she was like, um, everything's different. <laughs> like everything is different. So what we have now with the way that they do product launches and early access and these test groups it's so awesome for us to be able to incentivize people with getting started that way and sharing how awesome that they're going to be in this test group and they're going to be the first ones to do it and um, have that early access and all that stuff. So really that was like the big shift I made is at the end of 2017 with 80 day obsession. And then um, I've just tried to focus my business around staying relevant with all of our product launches. So I did um, the same thing through, um, well, I had my son in March and then I had like a pretty quiet March in April. And that was awesome because I had built my business for how many years, five and a half years to be able to do that, to be able to take that step back and have like a maternity leave where I was like kind of there, but kind of wasn't, that was great. And then we launched, um, to be mindset. Great timing for me. Uh, launching to be mindset was awesome. Same thing, trying to, um, stay relevant with a new product launch and just doing simple things that I know you guys are probably doing already with your team as far as like having a hype group around a new product launch and getting people the info so that when the day comes for launch, it's like people are ready and eager and waiting, you know, to, to go. So, um, yeah, so I just kind of was following that same pattern through lift four and then proving grounds. And then, um, we just had T20. So T20 uh, launch felt like the longest launch ever because like what did it start back in like December and I still feel like it's kind of launching because people are loving it and doing it. And for me, it was um, another reevaluation of my business. So I, for a long time, have run on multiple platforms, uh, Facebook, I have uh, I do have a likes page. I cross post on there. I can honestly say like, I don't put any time or energy or money into that. But, um, just like many coaches say nowadays, I am running most of my business and getting most of my customers, most of my coaches from Instagram. And I do, you know, still show up on Facebook and cross post, like I said, but the people that if I were to go back and evaluate and look at the challengers that are in my group, are people that are coming from from Instagram. So I wanted to, again, have another reevaluation of um, how I wanted to keep things simple because I was navigating being a new mom and being a stay at home mom and a work from home mom is not, it's not easy. You know, I think people think it is, but I tell my husband all the time, like, I'm here trying to hold things down with not only my business and the house and everything, but I'm caring for a living, breathing human 24 seven. Um, and the first six months of his life, he didn't sleep. He was extremely colic. Um, it was terrible. So I was trying to figure out how I could still be successful, still have my business moving forward. Um, but to keep it simple and fun. And that's what I told my husband. I said, if this isn't fun for me, if it's something that I feel like is taking the joy out of my day and it's feeling like a miserable job, like I don't want to do it. I want this business to always for me because that's how it started. And I want it to continue to be fun. Um, and if I'm not having fun, then I'm miserable. So um, for me, that was 
the boom of Instagram stories. And that is how I have fun in this business is, is by posting on Instagram stories and interacting with people that way. Um, and being very, very consistent on there. So really what I've been doing is, um, besides the fact of showing up every single day, obviously, is I try to uh, simplify my process as far as inviting goes. Um, I keep it super, super simple. And Whitney was asking me um, how many how many times I'm like having like a call to action or inviting people via stories or posts or anything like that. And I will say that in February, when I had um, 112 success club points, that was that was abnormal for me. I've never hit, um, I think my highest was the 2B Mindset launch, which was like in the 50s or something. So that was like a very abnormal month for me. So let's not act like that's going to happen all the time. But I was pushing for the test group uh, to be in Jericho's test group. So when I started February, I told myself every single day, every day, there was going to be an invite. I was going to be inviting some way, somehow, every single day in stories, whether that was me talking, whether that was me showing a transformation, whether that was me showing a transformation of myself, um, doing polls, doing the slide button, doing questions, whatever it was, there was something every single day. Um, and even now, I mean, I still, I would say like every, you'll probably see something in my stories as far as an invite every other day, every three days, you know, it's still, you know, pretty consistent. But um, I think my transformation 20, or my, trans, my transform 20 uh, journey was key for um, my success in the last couple months. And that's like a vital behavior. That's just so simple. I was just talking to one of my girls that's a brand new coach getting started. And she's just getting started with her weight loss journey. And I'm like, just do the program, you know, do the program, show up and you're going to inspire people. You're going to inspire people along the way. And um, for me, it was like being able to share that every single day and show um, a pretty big transformation. I had a 20 pound weight loss in one and a half rounds of uh, transform 20 and being able to show that to people um, really made the process a lot easier because I was being a product of the product and showing this is what I'm doing. This is what you can do too. Um, and here's, you know, here's how. So my process uh, simplified in the way that I got to a point where for years I was having lengthy, 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 lengthy conversations with people. And that's, you know, that's kind of how it was taught back in the day. It was like, when you're getting someone started, you should ask them like, all these questions and be a good listener. And, and those are still good pointers. But for me, it was like, and I think this is where a lot of coaches get hung up and where my new coaches get hung up too, is when they're telling me is like, you have all the, these conversations back and forth about like what you're doing and how they can do it too. And then like, when do you change the convo? When do you invite? And then all of a sudden you're going back and forth 20 times with someone. And it's like, oh my God, like, I have talked to this person for four days and I just, I couldn't do that anymore. I really just got to a point where it was like, again, draining me and I had to simplify things. So the way I run my business now is very, um, still personalized to each person that I talk to. Um, I do do some copy and paste messaging, but I always tweak it to at the beginning, make sure I'm saying their name. There's no, Hey girling. I am saying their name. I am mentioning something if we've talked about before or I'm mentioning how cute their kid is or something like still keeping it very personal but when somebody interacts with me and interacts with me means they're liking a transformation post they're commenting a transformation post they're clicking on a poll they're you know responding in some way to my story if I've invited any interaction like that when I go into invite them then because in my mind they have already let me in because they have even as simple as liking a post or clicking a poll. Um, what I did for all of the Transform 20 launch was a very, very simple message. And it was literally like, hey girl, don't know if you meant to hit my poll or not because we know how many accidental poll hitters there are. <laughs> Happens every single day. I just said, um, I don't know if you meant to hit my poll or not. Happens every day. No problem if not, but I'm going to share the details anyways. And I would just go into 
the program I'm doing right now is six weeks, six days a week, six, seven days a week, uh, 20 minutes a day, um, simple meal plan to follow. And after sign up, you'd get added into my accountability and support group. We have a lot of fun in there. Um, here's a form for you to look at to see if you think it's going to be a good fit for you. Let me know any questions you have. And that was it. Like literally that was the message. Um, and my Google form was very, um, and I can, you know, share any forms if you guys want to see anything, but it was very generic as far as like asking their information. And I made sure one of the very first things, if we hadn't already had that in conversation back and forth in our messages, um, making sure they weren't already working with a coach, um, making sure that was in the form. Like, have you ever worked with a coach before? Yes. No. Who is your team Beachbody coach name, email, basic info, Instagram handle, Facebook name. Um, and then right there on the form were the options for all the transform challenge packs for them. So they could see that right up front. Um, and then after that message was sent, obviously a handful of things could have happened. They could have been like one of those accidental pull hitters that was like, Oh crap, I didn't mean to hit that. Um, ignore me. I get ignored. <laughs> um, and people that, uh, respond back that are like, yes, I'm a hit it. Great. Cool. Uh, people that have a lot of questions, you know, it just depends on the person. But if I, um, didn't hear back from them, I always, anytime, anytime I message anyone on Instagram, if it has to do with business, I always flag it so that I can go back to it and make sure I can find it. Um, because follow-ups for me, like if I didn't follow up, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd have a business. Like I, I wish that we could present the opportunity to people in the first time. They're like, yeah, cool. Like it's just not always like that. So follow-ups for me are huge. So I was just making sure I was going through following up. Hey, not sure if you saw my last message, very, very simple. Um, and then go from there. So then as far as if they are filling out my form to get started, then I just simply use share cart to build that for them, send them the link, get them added into my group. Um, and go from there. I run my groups, um, one big community that is ongoing. I don't open new groups. I don't have start dates. I don't start over. I don't, it's like people are on their day one or their day 300. You know, everybody's on a different page and people know that coming in. Um, and then I just switch up every single month. I have a new theme in the group, um, and things that they can be directed towards like, how to access your bod and how to change your Shakeology flavor and just very simple things um, that anybody could could utilize at any point in their journey. But yeah, so I I don't restart my groups like I said. I just keep them ongoing and that has um, that has worked for me and I really really like it and that has given me joy again in running a group because for a long time I was running twenty one day groups, thirty day groups, and I was restarting them and reopening them and it was um, draining for me and it was people were falling off the wagon and then all of a sudden it was like who was not joining the group again so the fact that people are always in there if they fall off the wagon okay that happens but then they're still in there to see it so that when they're ready they can jump back in and then also what has happened with my business as far as keeping people in there and with these new product launches is I had a handful of girls um, let me take a sip of this real quick I had a handful of girls that um, weren't doing Transform 20 when it launched, but the majority of my group was doing Transform 20. And then within like two weeks, they were like FOMO. They were like, okay, I need to unlock this early access. I want that. I want to do what everybody else is doing. So it kind of creates that like, oh, what's this ultimate portion fix that these six or seven girls are doing? Like, I want to do that too. So yeah, that's really worked out for me. And then I do take advantage of if our team decides to do like a launch, like T20, like specific challenge group, like I'll always offer that to my people. Um, but they know that they always have my community page to, to fall back on. Um, and then, okay. So Instagram stories, I think the, um, key is, is to, like I said, besides being consistent, um, is to show up, show up a lot. Um, I see, I saw a thread and one of the leader pages was like, how many times do you post on your Instagram stories? And it was like two to three, three to five, eight to 10. I was like, oh my God, I probably post my story like 20 plus, if not more times a day, not every day. Um, it, it varies, but, um, yeah, I 
I stay um, consistent and active on there. And I am just 150 bajillion million percent transparent and raw and real and what people are hearing come out of my voice and how I talk and what I'm saying is exactly as if they were sitting right next to me in my house um, and they were a family member. Um, I don't hold anything back. Um, I get asked all the time, like, how are you so like, how do you share it all on, on your social media? And I'm like, what's the alternative being a fake person? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, like I have to stay true to who I am or I wouldn't do this business. Like I appreciate like, um, mom bloggers that they have to post like six pretty pictures in their feed a day like with their staged pretty house but like that's not who i am um like my house is like hi like that's my house like that's just not who i am and if that's what i had to do again i would be having fun so i just you know i'm just very um raw and and don't hold anything back um like I talked about my period on my stories today. Like that's how um, transparent I am. Um, and people appreciate that. And I get told that all the time. And that, that's a, a big compliment to me when somebody says, like, I just appreciate the things you share, the things you say. Um, and that's, I think, how people feel like they can connect with me um, and talk to me and ask me questions. So, um, okay. Got a little tangent there. So the other thing I do on my stories um, is creating like a FOMO list, I call it. And I, I know a lot of coaches do this already, but it's basically just um, like I'll set a goal at the beginning of the month for how many people that I want to get into my group that month. And whether it's five, 10, 15, whatever, however many people, I will just create the list so I can post it on my story so that when people do start joining, I put their name on it and like a little dancing gif or something with it. Um, and that's showing my followers then like, oh, people are actually joining her. Like it's not just her doing it. Like people are actually doing it with her. Um, so that has been great for my business because I've had, I mean, I've had people respond to it just being like, what is this? Like, cause it says right on there, like starting a new workout program with me or whatever. Um, and they, they're like, pique their interest just from seeing the list on, on my stories. Um, so sharing that and then, um, just remembering to have that healthy balance of having those business things of, um, sharing progress, not only from yourself, but from, I'll pull screenshots from my challenge group. Um, I usually just crop their name out stuff for privacy and share like comments from my challenge group of like successes they had or things they said, um, transformation pictures that I have permission to share, sharing that, um, and just any successes that I can, um, share with people so that again, they know that like what I have to offer is actually working. It's not a gimmick. It's not, uh, infomercial in the middle of the night. It's like, Hey, here we are. We're real people. Like we're working out. Like I'm up every day. I'm, and that's the thing is like with consistency with stories, like, like Jillian said, like how I take a shot of energize, like people know, like that's what I'm going to do in the morning. And right now I do a cruise countdown. It's like, I wake up, I do the cruise countdown, take the energize shot. I share a clip of my workout. And then the rest of the day, you know, it's whatever it's things I have to share, or say, or show my son or my dogs or, or whatever. Um, but keeping that balance of, yes, I want to talk about business every day if I can, but also we know that our followers don't just want to see all of that. So keeping the balance of sharing other things as well. Um, my biggest piece of advice, you guys, just as far as just business in general, I guess, is just to take ownership of your business and I don't know what your guys' goals are. I don't, again, I don't know how long you've been a coach. I don't know if you have little goals or big goals or big visions or, or whatever it is, but I hope you do. I hope you do have, you know, big visions for yourself and, and to remember that every single day. And I just, just talked about this with a handful of my coaches that like having that, we talk about all the time, having the why in the business and whatever it is that, that drives you to show up every single day is so important. And I think so many coaches are afraid to say that their why is attached to money. And like, I'll, I'll bust that myth right now for you that that's okay. Like, that's okay. I think that 
when, and I, I shut my coaches down right away. When they say to me, when we're first talking that they're wise, that they just want to help people. I'm like, listen, that's our job. Like we're all here to help people. That's what a coach is. If my only why was that I wanted to help people, then why would I need Beachbody? I could just post on my Instagram, inspire people, share a bunch of free meal plans, share a bunch of free workouts and move about my day. Like you're a coach for a reason, you know, like, and the opportunity to build this income is incredible. It can change your life. You know, like we all know what these products can do for us as far as changing our life physically, mentally, but the fact that this business can change our lives financially, which it has for, for my family is it's amazing. It's amazing that we have this opportunity that, that we can, can run with. Um, so having that vision of like, say it's you wanting to leave your full-time job or wanting to create a college savings for your child or whatever, like have that so freaking far front in your mind so that when you wake up and you don't want to post on your Instagram stories and you don't want to invite your challenge group and you don't want to, whatever it is, show up for your business, like instead flip it in your mind to be like, I don't think it's important today to work towards saving my child's college fund. Like, wow, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts to say that, doesn't it? Like when you like gut check yourself, like, Ooh, okay. Like I just like said, my family wasn't important to me. So like having that vision is so, so important to have it in front of you so that you continue to, to want to um, show up every single day. And the other thing I'll say is that don't be afraid of the hustle. There are, um, and Jillian will absolutely agree with this. There are times in the business where maybe you have bigger goals that are time sensitive, where, like pushing for like, like that test group last month for me, like that was a season of hustle for me because I had that goal in mind. And there's going to be times in your business where you're pushing for elite or you're pushing for um, a certain in income goal or whatever it is. Um, don't be afraid of that hustle. Uh, that that's business. Like I, if any top coach were to get on here and sit on here and say to you, like, it's just such an easy business. I just like show up on social media every day and like, it's awesome. And like, that's not real. Like this is a business and this is hard work and we have to put time into it to get results out of it. Um, so don't be afraid of the hustle. Don't be afraid of short, short term sacrifice for long term game. I, people told me that in the beginning of my business and I didn't really understand why. Like I was, I would always be like, Melanie Mitchell said it on a wake up call and it just stuck with me for some reason, short term sacrifice, long term gain. And then my upline would say it too. And so I started practicing those things in the beginning, you know, I would stop watching reality TV and I would tell my boyfriend now husband at the time, like, I can't go out on a Monday night because I have a team call I have to get on a Monday night and, you know, sacrifices like that in the beginning. I didn't get it then. I really didn't. But now looking back almost six years into the business with a child um, and I have all these amazing things that I'm so grateful for. Now I get it. You know, it's like, I trust me, I still have big goals in my business and I still wake up and do those same things to gut check myself and self evaluate to, to keep growing and to keep growing as a leader and to keep pushing forward as a coach so that I can be, you know, better than I was yesterday. But I get that now I get that short term sacrifice for long term gain uh, concept now because now looking back, it's like, I did work hard. I did work hard. And I'm not afraid to say that to coaches. I'm not going to ever sugarcoat it. I did work hard to get um, to where the point I am at in my business, um, today. So, and that's the other thing is don't, um, don't compare, uh, to any other coaches or however long they've been in the business or anything like that. Like stay in your lane, keep your head down and focus on you to, um, get to the, those places that, that you want to get. Um, and then the last thing I will leave you with, if then, if you guys have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those is, um, like, I don't know if you guys were on the sleigh call. I don't know. You guys listen to the sleigh squad calls. Jen was talking last night. Anyways, it was all about like going through hard times and things like that. I literally, Jillian always use you as an example. Always. I always say, what is your excuse? Like when coaches want to come to me and say that things are hard, times are hard and oh, I just don't think this is for me because I was told no. I'm like, 
wait, <laughs> I'm like, there are people in this business that have been through way harder things than any of us have been through. There are coaches that have had like Jillian traumatic injuries that I'll never forget seeing Jillian's post in my feed of her lifting those little weights in her hospital bed. And Katie Ersta or Jen Heckel, if you follow them, who went through cancer um, as a coach and just all these people in the, in the network that are not making what they have going on an excuse, they're using it to inspire others um, and to keep that, that moving forward. Like what if Jillian just would have quit when that happened? You know, like what, what would, what would her life be like different now, right now, you know, if, if she would have. And I just, just drive that home so hard to all my coaches too, when they're getting started is like, things are going to get hard and there's ups and downs, but just stay consistent and show up and, and don't give up when things get hard. And you're going to have seasons in your life where you have stuff going on. We've all been through it and we all have crazy times, not even things that are necessarily hard. Like I had a crazy two year span of my life where like, I was getting married. My sister was getting married. Um, and then we had like, my parents were selling their house. I moved, my sister moved out of state and then we had babies and it was like wedding shower, baby shower, wedding shower, baby shower. It was just like a lot, you know, going on just like crazy, like busy life. And you know, you just have to just keep moving forward because why would you want to look back and be like, where could I be? You know, like, where could I be if I wouldn't have let my foot off the gas, if I would have kept going, if I would have just stayed um, a little more consistent and kept showing up. So if you're struggling with that and like maybe like a focus of a daily activity or just being consistent in general, um, and I'm not, it's funny, like I'm not a tracker. I'm not a type A coach. I'm not anything like that. But this is the new success club tracker has been the absolute best thing that has happened for my team. Um, it's been the best thing for me to be able to get new coaches started um, and to share that with them, to um, have that accountability with the physical paper in front of them to be like, here's what I'm doing today and here's how I'm going to show up. So yeah. All right. I think that's it. I ramble. <laughs> no, that was awesome. It's so interesting you say that because about me, because I honestly, I think about your dad a lot. Like when I think about like, you know, when I was in a wheelchair for so long and unable to work out and like now that I'm out, it's like such a privilege. And I think about like people that can't. So, yes. um, it's really, it's really like, it's changed my whole outlook on everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I had just gone away, I probably honestly would still be in a wheelchair. There was nothing that said that I had to go Honestly, you guys, the doctors would have written me notes to stay out of work forever. I did not need to go back to my life. Um, but it's a privilege to be able to have my mind and work out. And I think about that every time I want to punch whoever is telling me to do a burpee on the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, and I just, I loved what you said. You were like, yeah, that's our job to inspire people. But really, why are you here? Um, that was something I struggled with for a long time because I was, I'm in a different situation. Like I don't want to leave my job and I love what I do in both senses. So I was like, I just want to help people. And my corporate mentor was like, that's great. But you know, what else? Um, and actually it was Katie Ersta. I was on a mastermind with her and I was like, well, I don't have tangible goals. And she was like, well, you better go get some. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that like just made a lot of sense the way that you said it. So for those of you that don't, I, I have made tangible goals because Katie told me to, but those of you that don't have them, you know, even if it's just like, I want to go to Target and not have to think about, you know, how much I'm going to spend, like that's a tangible goal and that's totally fine. Mine was like sponsoring a dog um, and being able to like give freely and that sort of stuff. And pay off part, you know, I want to pay off a hundred thousand dollars in my house in the next two years. Like those are tangible goals for me. And I struggled with those for a long time. So I encourage you guys to, to have those, like, I want to be happy goals. That's great. But then you need to figure out how you're going to get there. So this was sure. awesome. You definitely didn't ramble. So, um, <laughs> I know we have a small group tonight. We kind of always have a small group for our team calls. So it makes you feel any better. Once I had Christina Delgado and I had three people show up. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, so, um, does anyone have any questions? I'm sure Katie would answer any specific questions you had on stories. Um, I encourage you to watch her stories because no offense, Katie, but they're not like super fancy. Mm -mm. Like, you know, you don't need to, some of these coaches have like these crazy effects or they like look like a model at 5 a.m. And yeah. Katie looks like a person. She's very pretty, <laughs> but she doesn't look like she's just gone to the spa at 5 a.m., right? So you don't have to be that way. and You don't have to know how to do graphics or perfect lighting. She stands in her basement and shoots Energize and talks about spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's funny you said that um, about like, um, pretty stories or whatever. And like every once in a while I'll share, like, um, I don't know if you remember Brooke Lipoff made that story reel for transform 20. Oh, I totally <laughs> use that. Yeah. yeah. If I ever, if there's anything pretty like that ever on my story, just know that someone else made it, <laughs> not me. Right. Um, because I just, and it's, it's funny you said that because I remember like maybe like three ish months ago, I saw, um, a coach that I admire, I follow her stories and she had this beautiful call to action for coaching. And it was like, you could tell it was like not made on stories. Obviously it was like made in some other app and it was like all these pretty pictures and all these pretty wording and like all this consistency. And I was like, I actually like thought to myself, I, I'm not inviting that way. Like, I wonder if that like matters to people to like see that or like oh, like my call to action suck compared to that. And like having all that like comparison game. And then again, I just like shot myself out of it. Like that's not who I am. And that's not what people know that I, how I share or anything like that. So I'm okay with it. Like I said, I will share um, if someone else makes it. Like I have a great <laughs> graphics girl that helps me out, but I, I'm just not, I have no patience for that. No. I don't either. Yeah. Um we were just talking about some of this stuff in the, in the test group for morning meltdown that I don't have any patience for that stuff. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, seriously guys, like I encourage you to look at our stories cause they're really regular. It's nothing, you know, like I, I love Jen Richardson, but like, I can't edit my pictures like that. Like my pictures just aren't that good and that's her. And she obviously has an amazing business, but we have to like not compare ourselves to those people and know you can still have an amazing business, even if you're really not that great at editing pictures. So yeah. And that's Especially always when, like when I'm like real like that and, sh and like share like funny things like that, that's, I always get like a big reaction or a big, like, uh, I don't know whether you want to say like likes or comments or whatever. Like my, I had a picture just last week. My son literally had his finger up my nose and my caption was about like everybody on Instagram wants the best preset to make their pictures look pretty. But like, here I am, you know, like with my son's finger up my nose. Um, and that's what people expect. They know they're not going to get like the aesthetic of my page stays the same. And I've been doing for a while, like picture, picture, uh, quote, but that's about as, <laughs> much consistency that goes into my pictures. Okay. That's really helpful. Do you guys have any questions or am I the only one that has questions? I have a question. So, yeah, go ahead. um, so I like, you're getting so many challenges, which is amazing. But like, here's my question. How are you like keeping them engaged and like in the group? Like, are you, cause that's like always been my struggles. Like, well, I mean, aside from the fact that I'm not getting 200 success club points, but no matter how many people I get, I feel like I have a hard time. Like when people start to fall off, like I'm like, Hey, come back to the group. Hey, come back to your group. Like how many times are you like reaching out to the people who are like falling off to like come back, especially if you have that many people. Okay. So we just, I just had this conversation last night on a mastermind, <laughs> uh, with some of my coaches and I was, um, very transparent in telling them that I am on the challenger side and with my coaches, I am not a hand holder. I am not a hand holder right off the bat because then people know that and uh, know the expectations from me. Um, I don't like when people message me in my inbox, I don't answer right away so that they know also that I'm not a slave to my inbox. Um, but as far as like checking back um, in with people, I am doing none of that outside of the group. 
unless they message me first. If they message me first, like, which obviously happens all the time, like I have people ask me like a question about BOD, like, or um, how to mix their Shakeology or, you know, like questions that challengers ask us, mm. like that, that goes on all the time as far as like them asking me questions and stuff. But as far as me hunting them down to be active in the group, I don't do that. Um, what I will do every, even maybe like once a week, is I will put up like some sort of funny meme or gif or something like my favorite one is the one where the lady's like looking like this and I'm like hey like where are you at like where are you guys at like who needs a kick in the butt who needs to restart no shame like we're all human here like tell me below like what are you struggling with I'm here I'm not going anywhere you know where to find me type of thing so that they know mm -hmm. I just know that like at the end of the day, we're all adults and I'm not going to tell people to like, I'm not going to like physically like pull their finger to press play on the workout. Like they, sh they should be able to do that, you know? Yeah. No, I appreciate hearing that from you because like, I think that that's, and with the comparison thing, like that's where I get so like, ha, ah, because like I've had coaches who, or customers who've like left me and then after I've been like, you should coach and they've been like, no, no, no. And then they're coaching with somebody else. And then I'm like, am I like, do I, am I not holding their hand enough? Like what is happening? And then like, I'm like, well, if I need to hold their hand that much, I don't want them anyway. So like, I appreciate hearing from someone who's like doing amazing that like they do the same thing where it's just like, and I'll, and I'll tell you that I, that's something that I've had to grow to learn with, um, time with coaching is, is that, um, I forget who originally told me this, but it's kind of a wake up call for me. It was like, Hey, some people might not vibe with me as their coach. And yeah. I have had people leave me. I've had coaches leave me. I've had customers leave me. And I think that's just the nature of any business. Like my dad owned a car dealership for 25 years. And I've learned like a lot of like solid business tips from him throughout the years. And he's kind of always just like taught me to have like a thick skin of, you know, somebody might've bought a car from him and then, their experience maybe wasn't the, what they thought their expectations was of it and they didn't vibe with it. And they maybe thought, you know what, maybe I should drive a Chevy instead, instead of a Ford and they move on to a different dealership and they move on to somebody else. So I kind of think of it the same way as like, mm. I'm not always going to be everyone's um, cup of tea because as much as I'm uh, real and, and raw and transparent, I'm also equally Oh, sorry. I just had a pop up. I'm also equally um, tough love. I definitely feel like I'm a tough love person, but I also think that they get that from my stories as well. Like every once in a while, my stories, I'll have like some sort of like, really, you're saying you don't have time because like, here's this girl in my group that works night shift. Here's this girl in my group that goes to school, is a mom and works. Like here's this girl in my group, her baby sleeps one hour a day. Like mm, actually you do have time. So like I will do things like that where I'm just very like blunt. Uh -huh. um, and I think that that can kind of like set the tone of how people know how I am. Yeah, and I don't say you did when you did your story, you're like, y'all don't read. I told you already. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It was like, something about oh, it was with someone the, asked like where you got today, something and, like, and you're like could you read and it's read you know yeah. yeah I can't like so I do ask me anything Tuesday on my stories and I told my sister I'm like if people don't start asking different things like I'm gonna have to stop because it's affecting my mental health <laughs> because I'm like this is where I get myself tanner these are my favorite leggings this is, blah, 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 you know, like naming off like the six things that people ask every week. And I'm like, all right, let's get those out of the way. And it was hilarious because people kept asking that. I'm like, wow, you guys, you don't read. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. But yeah, I think, um, you know, Jeanette, like there are coaches that are big hand holders. And if that's not you, I think setting that tone is good. Like, you know, I, I don't know what vibe I give off. I give up. I think I, I'm similar to Katie in that I share everything. I'm very like real and transparent. Um, so I try to, I try to let people know that like, if you come to me with a bunch of excuses, I'm going to be real and transparent with you too. I'm going to be like, my favorite is when people are like, Oh yeah, I bumped my elbow. I can't work out today. And I'm like, I was in a 
fucking wheelchair. Like it's just so. You should have. Been, you should be like, yeah, I got bumped by a car. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, it's just it's frustrating, honestly. Um, but I, you know, I try to like take a. I try to say it kindly, even if I keep it real. You know, so I think that you can be kind and still be real. You can go yeah. a long way with emojis. <laughs> I'm like, you just put a bunch of smiley faces and hearts at the end of it. Like one of my favorite things to say to people is um, because it like triggers me for some reason when people say they have to ask their husband for permission yeah. to do anything. I'm yeah. like, listen, hell would freeze over before I ever asked my husband for permission to do anything. So listen here. So anyways, when people are saying like, oh, I just need to like ask my husband if that's okay. I just am like, okay, girl, like sounds good. Like, let me know if you have any other questions. And also just remember that before you got married, you were a person too. Wink face, heart, 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 heart. Like, <laughs> like that little, like, like little confidence boost, like yeah. decisions, girl, you know? I yeah. had a girl tell me she didn't have her own credit card. She only, her husband handed her the card when he allowed Oh my God, that stresses me out. No. no debit card, no nothing. And I was like, how do you get gas? And she's like, oh, my husband will give it to me if I need to buy something. And then those are those situations too, where I just so badly want to be like, also, let me show you how to build our business. So you really never have to ask permission. <laughs> well, you won't let her have a bank account. Oh. That makes me want to be like, here's a domestic abuse phone. Number. Right. Yeah. I know. But yes, <laughs> it's very scary. Yeah. So it makes me grateful. My husband lets me have a bank account. He's sitting right here. <laughs> because um, you're filling it yeah seriously I know it's so funny when people say that when I came to Doug and told him I wanted to do this he was like okay so you want to get in really good shape and make money and I was like yeah and he was like okay cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the plan yeah um, um I have one more question Katie by the way <laughs> what um what did you do for PD like right after Cam was born because um I have a baby coming and I'm just like, I feel like life's going to change so much. Like, mm -hmm. so any PD that you were like, okay, I've got to balance this like mom thing. And like, I also work full time. So like, I'm like, there's gonna be a lot of balancing and adjustment. Yeah. So I just talked about some stories yesterday too, actually that I, once I had cam, I switched all to audible because like the days of like sitting down and reading a book just like weren't realistic for me. I'm actually so pumped that I'm going to take, a hard physical book. Cam's not coming on the cruise with us um, on the ship to be able to like enjoy a book. But yeah, I switched to Audible and I just, my biggest advice for like a new mom and that transition period again is like, I remember texting my upline. Um, I don't even know how many weeks postpartum I was pretty fresh. And I was like, I'm drowning. Like I, my, I can't keep my head above water. And she kind of like gave me the permission to be like, girl, like go enjoy your baby. Um, and it kind of makes me sad sometimes when I see, um, I won't mention any names, but like top, top coaches where like they push a baby out and then they're like working five minutes later. And I'm like, let's be uh, better examples for people. I think that it's uh, okay to know that you can, you know, take that step back and uh, enjoy that time and just do what you can when you can and take out all of the things that are giving you stress, aren't moving your business forward and are just distractions. So for me, one of the biggest things, um, and everybody runs their business differently, obviously, but, um, I didn't do any one-on-one -on -one calls with coaches from the time I was about, mm, six or seven months pregnant because I started to get like bad anxiety, like during my pregnancy that like, I couldn't breathe. Like I was really claustrophobic. Like my child made me claustrophobic <laughs> that I couldn't talk like for long periods of time. People would ask me to host their team calls. I would deny them. Um, so that was like something that I was like, I'm taking this off my plate, I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one calls anymore. Um, and actually cam is over a year old and I still don't do one-on-one -on -one calls because I, um, transitioned into how I connect with my coaches differently as far as letting them know we can voice message back and forth on messenger as many times as you want. And then I also have them download the app Marco Polo, which is basically the same thing. It's just video back and forth so that I could do it on my own time to where I wasn't getting on 
a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call with somebody that was like draining me and giving me excuses for why their business wasn't moving forward when they already had the tools. Um, that wasn't serving me at all. And also I couldn't do it. Like my child, like I said, didn't sleep for the first six months. So scheduling any type of call, it wasn't happening. So um, just letting go of that was like huge for my business. So again, I just think like reshuffling and reevaluating, um, scheduling things if you, if you have to, and then delegating um, if you have like coaches that you trust to do certain things or a success partner or whoever it is for you to, to help you out letting go of those reins and letting those things happen, which was very hard for me because I, although I'm not type A, I am a control freak in some way to where almost, almost just that I want to make sure that everything's okay with my team and everything is being posted and reminded in calls. And like, I just want to make sure they're getting everything. So like letting go of those reins to let other people do that was hard for me, but worth it a hundred million percent. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, get a buddy. It's really, um, it's like if your hair appointment runs late, your buddy can cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. Um, and I agree with you, Katie. Like I can't sit on a one-on-one -on -one call and listen to someone tell me that the business isn't working. And then I'm like, okay, let me see your tracker. And they're like, uh, I don't know what a tracker is. Exactly. And that's People why I don't realize that affects us as leaders. Like mm -hmm. I feel like a failure when people, you know what I mean? Like when people say, say stuff to me like that, I'm like, I, it makes me feel bad. And I don't think people realize that, but it does. Yeah. I just, I'm so upfront, even just from the beginning, as far as the welcome email I send my new coaches is here are your resources. And I think even there's probably seasoned coaches that don't take advantage of things like the national wake up call or the beach body champions page. I'm always in that page when I'm washing dishes or if cam is like distracted and playing on his own, like I'll just like make sure I'm not missing anything. Like I literally watch every single video that has ever been posted in the beach body champions page because I love learning. I love learning from other leaders and hearing what's working for them, what they're doing so that what I could like implement in my business, that page alone is so helpful for people. So really if your coach your brain said is saying they're not getting anywhere, it's like, are they taking advantage of all the we already have even outside of, I mean, your own team itself has so many things that you can plug into, but then even outside of that, like I have a, um, a coach, a newer coach that is, she's almost two star. She's only been a coach since the very end of 2017. And she, she was one of those people that it, it kind of blew me away how fast she was growing and how well she was doing. I was kind of like, Hey, like, what are you doing? <laughs> because she was really just like taking off and it was kind of like, um, it was awesome. Awesome to see that. And she was like, I just literally stayed up. Like, she's like, there was a week when after I signed up as a coach, I stayed up like every, every night and I watched YouTube videos of people. And I listened to old, your old uh, team call recordings that you had in your file section. And I'm like, wow, I wish every coach was like this to just be self-sufficient and be like, here's all the tools. I have everything right in front of me. I can just do it if I want to. And that's, that's what she did. Like I never handheld this coach whatsoever. She hit success club 10 plus every month. She's on the verge of two star, like I said, and she's just doing it because she just decided here's all the stuff I can just run it and, and do it. That's awesome. All right. Anyone have anything else? Kelly, you look asleep. <laughs> Kelly is a self sufficienter as well is it, i have a question sure um it's gonna sound really bad and i don't want to make you feel bad jillian or whitney when you watch this back but what is the success club tracker and where can i find it um so it's in the units of the team page um <laughs> right so there's mm, how many units are there i'll tell you in two seconds so the success club tracker is did you take the new success club training when it launched? Um, probably not. Okay. 
I assume. So you want to go to... I'll be honest or halfway honest and say no because I don't remember it. Okay. Well, so I would definitely start in your back office. If you, okay. if you seriously haven't seen the new Success Club system, then I would go into your back office and make sure you're... How often do you log in? Every day. Okay. And you haven't seen any announcements about it? I swear it was in there. Oh, well, I, the Super Saturday one I saw, like... No, but it launched, like, three months ago. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's under... It's now called Learning instead of Units. That's new, Katie. I know. Um, that confused me, too. I was like, what is happening? Facebook so, needs to stop changing. So, um, pinned to the top of our coaches page, tells everyone to go through the units. There's mm -hmm. a seven day quick start and then there's the 2019 vital behaviors and the first post in the 2019 vital behaviors unit, which is unit two, is mm -hmm. called business activity tracker in English. Okay. And I have another question. Um, I know this isn't really about the Instagram stuff, but I have a coach who wants to start, um, but is hoping to hit like the success, success club, um, you know, where they can go to summit, they get paid to go to summit. What is it called? Success club. Um, Success starters. starters. Yeah. yeah. And she's hoping to do that. So it'd be smart to start on April 1st, right? So they actually count. Did she sign up in March? She hasn't yet. I, um, we're going to, we're talking about it today. Okay. Yeah. So they, um, yeah, they count the month you sign up and then the next full month. So say she signed up today she would have the rest of March and then um, April. So March, April, May, June, right, Jillian? They do yeah, like they so count. The way it works is the month you sign up can count or it doesn't have to. Yeah. So for example, if she signs up in March, it can be March, April, May, if, or it can be April, May, June. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So if she signs up in mm -hmm. April, it can be April, May, June, or May, June, July. It doesn't matter if it's the 1st or the 30th. Okay. But would it count for this summit? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to check the back office. I don't think so. I, I think, think we're at the cutoff. I feel yeah. like I want to say. Okay. That makes sense. Cause I was wondering the same thing. Cause it's only like three months, three and a half. Four so months. I would definitely, if you're onboarding someone that wants to run like that, I would definitely make sure you personally are through the new vital behaviors. I know. That's what my big thing is, is signing up um, coaches, is that I'm, I own my own shit, right? Like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm not doing. So I don't want to sit here and act like I'm like some making a bunch of money over here. But I want her and the other two people who are interested in doing this, I want to be able to teach them the best that I can. I know a lot of stuff, but I'm not, I can't explain explain it very well I guess is that's my problem something I say all the time is when people ask me like when should I start growing a team when should I start adding coaches is there's no right or wrong time rip the band-aid and do it because the best way you're going to learn everything that you want or need to learn about coaching is to teach others because mm -hmm. it gives you that sense of accountability of when people are coming to you um so I had I don't know, handful of coaches that started like right around the same time as me that I signed them up and I had no freaking clue what I was doing. I was blind and we didn't have, I mean, it's like literally saying like an old man saying we walked to school in the snow on our bare feet. Like we didn't have coach basics. We didn't have Jack diddly nothing back in the day as coaches. So now coaches coming in have everything. Um, so I do feel like it's easier to navigate getting started and diving in like that. But the best way to get your business rocking and rolling is to have others join you because then you are absolutely going to keep wanting to show up and um, have that extra sense of accountability because then you have others that are looking up to you, you know? Yeah. I, I wonder too, Katie, if it helped that we didn't have that stuff. I say that all the time. I say that all. I'm like... Maybe because we just had to just dive in the freaking pool and we didn't know how to swim, but I don't know. I see a lot of coaches too in the round table, including top coach Ashley Mull said that didn't even have an upline. Yeah. Don't. I think her upline's a discounter. Mm-hmm. 
like, and her up one will fully admit that. It's not that the girl is like saying, you know, I stink. She's just like, I didn't want to build a business. So there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of super successful coaches that I don't know that Melanie Mitro's upline is that active, you know? Yeah. And, um, I always use like Christina Delgado as an example. Her income is outrageous and she, it was like my first summit. I remember her speech where she was like, I was put on an inside, 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 dead, 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 dead leg, no help, no volume, no nothing. Um, I had to build it myself and look where she's at now, you know? Yeah. 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 I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm just starting to use Instagram. I have a very infrequently used account. Would and my name is just something random, like Eve and Ethan's mom, would it be better to start a new account? Or I tried changing it to something similar to my name and it was very hard to find anything that didn't have like 15 numbers after it. Um, so what would your suggestion be for that? Do you have, um, do you have some followers on that account? Some, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I personally wouldn't, I would just stick okay. with it. Um, just because you have even that little bit of base. I, um, I used my same, if you actually, if you ever want a late night scroller, <laughs> my Instagram account is the same Instagram I, account I've had since like 2012 or 11 or whatever, like yeah. way before I was a coach, you know, like you'd see my before coach life on there. And, um, and that's the thing too, is like with building, I think that building an Instagram, uh, there's a sense of, uh, feeling like you have to have thousands and thousands of followers to have, have success there. And it's really just not true because I had a couple hundred followers when I started. Um, and I do have, uh, I fluctuate, but I'm like around 20, 20 K now, but like that was years and years of a slow growth build. I know that there's coaches that go from like nothing to a hundred K. Um, but you don't have to have that, those numbers to have a successful, uh, business and be working your business there. Um, I don't use like right now, I won't say I won't in the future, but I just, I've never committed to like jumper media or 21 social or anything to help me grow just because it's probably just me again, being a control freak. Um, but I just have, focused on being social on social media. How simple is that? Being social and uh, continuing to engage with people in the simple, uh, whatever you want to call it, of like, 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 comment, follow, however you guys do it. Like just um, keeping up with that and finding people through hashtags and things like that and things we have uh, interest in, in common to keep that growth. So I'm not somebody that goes from, you know, like, it's not like next month I'll have a thousand more followers than I do right now. I'm a slow builder as far as followers go, but it's just a matter of consistency, you know, and I'm okay if it's a slow, slow growth, but yeah, I guess that really wasn't your question, but I, <laughs> I would say just keep it and, and grow you, from you there. Think she okay. should change her name though on the account. I would, I think that, uh, there's, two things either one you could have it be just your name um but if that's taken obviously you'd have to tweak it a little bit um like mine is just well for years mine was katie flynn fitness that's kind of how i branded myself but then i um and then my husband made me take his married name no i wanted to take his name so i wanted to make sure that i changed it to having that incorporated somehow so i just took the fitness out and changed it to katie flynn crumb so that people would kind of just know that I'm a person and I'm not just fitness. Yeah. So um, I did like changing it just to my name, but then also like you could have like a catchy thing that is kind of your brand. Like yeah. I know Ashley Molstad for years was like foodie girl fitness and that's how people knew her. Now it's her name, but you could have something catchy like that. Um, okay. Okay. I, I think I'll change it because it's just something like I think it's my kids' names, like even Ethan's mom. Or something. Kelly, what about using your middle name instead of numbers? I've tried yeah. a bunch of things, but I'll have to go back and try again. Like that was 
maybe a couple of months ago. I wouldn't do a lot of numbers. I would definitely try yeah. to, yeah. Even like your name was like, even if you have to add like a little underscore or something. Yes, that's what I was just um, looking at. So yeah, okay, I will try that. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, well, thank you, Katie. Um, I just saw, by the way, Morning Meltdown, they said there's gonna be new um, guidelines in the next 24 hours. So I guess we're getting- I was just telling my husband, I'm like, I am like, I'm like a mouse. I don't even know what to do. I'm like, <laughs> what do I say? I don't know. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Um, but I will see you on Sunday, if not before. And if you do decide you wanna come work out Sunday morning, just let me know. We're on the way I to the will. Thank you. So, I'm so excited. So, so excited to get away. Yeah, me too. I'll have baby, but I'm still excited to get away. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again and have a wonderful rest of your night. We'll talk to you later, guys. I'll get the recording up in a little bit. All right. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 Bye.